try something new today. <laughs> Okay, here's an idea I've had in the back of my head for a couple of years. A little YouTube series called Re-Edit. Nothing spectacularly new or innovative, I guess, but I will take one of my already published and finished photos, show you that photo, <laughs> show you the raw file that this photo came out of and that I shot, and I will re-edit the whole thing with First of all, the software I have nowadays, or with the different point of view I have nowadays, or the different perspective that I have on what happened there, uh, or where I want to go with the finished product. And I will take you along, along the way. It won't be too long normally, I would say. Um, and we'll see where we get to, right? Because I think it's nice to see other people's process when it comes to editing pictures and how you behave in what situation or how you handle just your regular uh, editing word workflow, right? Um, there are so many ways to achieve the same thing, There's so many different things. There, everyone has an opinion, but there's no really too many rights and wrongs, right? Uh, you should be able to experiment. And if you like this and everyone else says, nah, well, they might be right, but if you like it, you like it. And that's so much more important than everyone uh, woohooing because you had this super amazing photo that got, I don't know, how many thousand likes on Instagram. And that's what I'm trying to do here. Show you why I had this kind of connection to the photo maybe, or how, and what inspired me to get to that final product and how I edited the final thing and why that tells my story with that photo better than Maybe something else. Why did I go color, not black and white, or vice versa? So, enough talking, let's jump right in. So, here we have a selection of a couple of photos I shot in 2011. Um, went on a road trip from Houston to LA, I think, there's somewhere in between near Grand Canyon. And um, as you can see, this is the original I published. Quite uh, HDRE <laughs> and um, I br did shoot brackets uh, that's what you see uh, the other pictures are and um, the picture on the left is um, uh, re-edit I did a couple of years ago because I yeah didn't like the look of this uh, too much anymore after such a long time but now I think this is actually way too dark uh, within the car details and a bit too contrasty. So let's see what we can come up with and um, turn these into a merged HDR. I think I also shot these completely freehand, but I can't remember. Maybe if Tom is watching this, he can actually tell me if he remembers. Um, yeah, I normally leave auto tone off just because I, um, yeah, like to fiddle with a picture myself completely and also the ego thing about uh, yeah just leave that on non and merge but you can see auto tone shows you a little preview of where you could go but meh, we don't need that right <laughs> so here we are so I normally like to start uh, with the tone curve and, you know, just get a feel for the photo and where I might want to go. And um, just giving it a little basic, very basic curve. Um, and then, you know, I just go up to the basics uh, panel and start playing, which I think is actually quite nice. Uh, if you allow yourself to play around and just test, especially if you're new to it and if you're not certain where you want to go with a picture sometimes, right? It's nice to just play around and try and get a feel for what you're doing. Um, yeah, 
sharpen the raw file, which is always a good idea because the raw files always need sharpening. And here it's just, if you hold uh, Alt or Option on your keyboard, depending on your operating system, you get this mask where you see that the white parts uh, are the ones that get basically sharpened. So you can limit the uh, sharpening to those areas and yeah, your picture normally looks a little bit cleaner and nicer. <clears throat> so I'm still trying to figure out where I want to go with this because the other one was very, as I said, had this very bad HDR feeling to it. And the one I did two years ago, yeah, it's a bit too grim for what I feel this picture actually meant for me, right? You know, you're in this super dusty area in the desert somewhere and driving this cool car with your buddy and going on a road trip and I don't know it gave, I have this very specific memory and I somehow try to come back to it and I like what the how the car looks basically so I'm adding this gradient to balance out the right side of the picture and here I'm just trying to yeah get a little bit more warmth back and I like to go overboard sometimes with like stuff like saturation or white balance or if you like coloring stuff like with split toning and so on. Um, it's good to go overboard and then dial it back down. I, at least for my brain it works a little bit easier, right? Like if you go here and put it on full on, uh, <laughs> on hardcore mode. Yeah, I want blue in there, but I didn't want that much blue in there. But somewhere in between, you know, you just go back and forth until it feels right and feels better. And sometimes it just doesn't work. And then you just, uh, you know, go back to nil. But for me, it definitely helps if I play around with it a little bit. Hail D. Hayes, um, which, yeah, sometimes works well. And... <laughs> Yeah, see, I even with the vignetting I go back and forth, but yeah, let's leave the vignette out of this one. And yeah, I mean, you can correct your lens uh, with the lens profiles and so on and so on, but it doesn't necessarily, you know, nothing is a must. The number one thing I think that is important uh, is that you like how the photo looks, right? And that weird HDR look. I mean, I had that for ages now and I really didn't mind in the beginning, so I must have liked it and got, I think people liked it too, but yeah, it's good to listen to critique uh, from other people, even if it's like stupid trolling sometimes, but um, you know, you have to stay true to yourself too. If you like something and other people don't and you look and try to look at what they're saying, why they don't like it, but you still feel this is what, it, you know, what you want to get out of it uh, or what you wanted to do with the photo, then just go and do it. And, you know, your opinion might change too after a while or uh, somewhere in the future, but if that's what you like at the moment, I think that is okay too. Yeah, I'm playing around with the colors a little bit and just thinking about if I can go if I should go overboard or super artsy with that thing or just keep it in a bit more realistic uh, color space. And I think taking out the blacks a little bit and um, it, it's not necessarily that I want to go want to go vintage with it, but I think it adds to that dusty desert feeling you know i remember <laughs> i had still dust from that road trip like uh, when i got back home after weeks uh because i mean, went through the main part of that thing in two nights i think uh, of that um uh, route from houston to las vegas or actually we did it in one night and then we went back into the desert but um yeah dust got everywhere but yeah, that's something, you know, the sun is burning down on you and you have dust everywhere and it's like, it's just a super cool feeling. And I think not having like the super contrasty blacks in there is actually, I 
it's actually a nice uh, touch. So here I'm just like comparing a little bit between the different versions and the raw file and the HDR. And um, yeah, I think we're getting close. And, you know, it's, it, if you're not 100% sure, you know, make a digital copy of the file you have in there in Lightroom or in whatever else co um, program you're using. Um, just make a copy of the file however you like uh, or however it's possible in the program and try different versions of a picture, right? Like, this could work in black and white, and it probably does, but... You probably won't know if you haven't tried it or it doesn't matter if you know or not but if you feel like trying something then just go and do it because we're not developing film here right and if you have the time to put in and you know why not give it a try and see where you, where it goes this could look nice but i i really think i prefer the colored version though to be honest Spoiler alert. <laughs> There's definitely a place for black and white, but uh, I think with this one, the whole feeling that is connected to the memories I have of the picture definitely works much, much better in color. And um, this is a completely different picture. But, you know, Whatever rocks you about. I mean, there are people who only shoot black and white, which I will not understand, never understand, probably. Um, there are people who only shoot color, and there are people who only shoot film, or only shoot digital, or... Yeah, I don't... I don't really give a shit. A couple of years back, I still tried to shoot uh, as little black and white photos as possible, or at least uh, edit them... Uh, not in black and white and just keep away from it but you know I think every picture can be different and it's it has so much to do with the mood you want to transport and with the story you want to tell and this certainly tells a different story than the version we did before right but I think that's it can't be said enough that you really should go and try and try and try different things and overexpose, underexpose and see what it does, right? Because if you really want to learn, there's no better way to play around and just see what comes out of it. And the cost is, uh, you know, we're, we're not standing in the dark room developing film and sniffing chemicals. Somehow you can, you know, make an argument that every single one of these works okay maybe not the hardcore old school hdr one but even that i mean it's not that bad but bad enough that it that i really don't like it anymore but bottom right really rocks i think and is the best version yet the black and white one is out for me because this photo needs color for sure and the top left i don't know a bit too grim maybe and works too but this is yeah i think the warmth in this picture combined with the crushed blacks just gets it where it needs to go and it's also good i mean you know when if you're not like in a rush for a job or anything but if it's your vacation photos i like to just leave them be after i edit them uh edited them sorry <laughs> after i finished editing them and um come back to them like a week or two weeks after and go over them again and maybe do a little more adjusting because sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of distance from the photos and i also used to do stuff like this like right when i came back from the holidays and now i leave it be a little bit because I'm not going to forget our holidays or how I felt on the holidays but it's for me this works at the moment anyway and I think you can try it too and with these I'm pretty sure I found my my winner <laughs> 
So, I hope you liked it. Um, if not, let me know. If you liked it, let me know too, please. And um, give me your thoughts in general. I mean, was it too quick? Was it too short? Was it fast? Was it slow? Did I uh, not talk clearly enough? Or didn't I explain it clearly enough? Or did I go into too much detail? Or whatever. Let me know because I really want to improve on this. And this was the first time I did this. And um, hey, I mean, honestly, if you have any... Um, suggestions of what photo you would like to see re-edited my links are all below in the description of this video and um, let's do this see you next time adios cowboy